along the banks of the Mississippi River, right before it spills out past New Orleans into the sea, lies Cancer Alley, an 85-mile strip of Mississippi shoreline where residents are contracting cancer at astronomical rates. But this isn't a phenomenon based in genetics or some cruel twist of fate. Cancer Alley is the product of environmental pollution. And today, we're going to figure out exactly where this pollution is coming from. This is the story of plastics, the harm they cause, the industries that create them, and how that 85-mile strip of Mississippi shoreline and other areas like it are suffering because of them. This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream, which now comes with Nebula for free when you sign up using the link in the description. If you walk into your kitchen, pretty much everything in some way or another has encountered plastic. The plastic bags you stuff into a drawer, your favorite cup, and even the package keeping those blueberries fresh. But despite plastic's ubiquity, we often forget where it comes from. Indeed, when it comes to plastic, our efforts seem to be much more focused on what happens after we use it than before we use it. So first, let's understand how plastic gets made. It all starts here. Or here. That's right, plastics are basically just fossil fuels in solid form. In fact, 99% of plastics are made from chemicals rooted in fossil fuels. The plastic creation process begins with crude oil, coal, or natural gas, which is then refined and distilled or cracked into usable chemical compounds such as ethylene or benzene. Of course, there are certain plastics that are the product of recycled goods, but I'll get into recycling later. The key thing here is that the plastic we use so heavily is really the same as the petroleum we put in our cars or the natural gas we use to heat our homes which is one of the reasons why the fossil fuel industry loves plastics. With the compounding economic pandemic and environmental crises bearing down on the fossil fuel industry, big oil seems to be in trouble. BP reported losses of $5.7 billion in 2020, while ExxonMobil lost a staggering $22.4 billion. It was truly a crushing year for the fossil fuel industry. And yet, oil and gas executives still seem optimistic. Exxon says it hopes to grow by 4% each year, and part of their scheme to achieve that growth involves plastics. Indeed, plastic seems to be the fossil fuel industry's escape plan from the transition to a zero carbon world. We are now witnessing big oil pour resources into many new plastic factories. North of Corpus Christi, Texas, ExxonMobil secured hundreds of millions of dollars in tax breaks to build a natural gas distillation or cracking site to produce plastics. Shell has also put its faith in plastics, investing in a multi-billion dollar ethane cracking factory on the Ohio River in Pennsylvania, which when finished will churn out 1.6 billion metric tons of plastic pellets every year. Chevron building a new plant, and so is Total. All told, the fossil fuel industry has announced 349 chemical and plastic projects since 2010. Greenpeace Executive Director Annie Leonard explains this obsession with plastic in a PBS Frontline report. Single-use plastic is their plan B. They're not going to be able to continue to drill that oil and gas and burn it for energy anymore. So this is their lifeline. They are going to double down on single-use plastic like we have never seen. And all of this new plastic infrastructure means increased production and ultimately a barrage of emissions. Because alongside the physical pollution of plastics littered in our waterways and immediate environments, plastic is causing a colossal greenhouse gas problem. Back in Cancer Alley, despite community organizing and some small victories, things are looking worse. Yet another plastic factory is trying to make its way through the permitting process, which considering the region and country's history of complete disregard for the health and well-being of the low-income communities of color that live in the area, the construction of this heavily polluting factory comes as no surprise. Cancer Alley is the product of the environmental racism that pervades the U.S. and the world. I have a hundred people in the meeting. Has anybody in the room had anybody in their house die of cancer? Everybody stand up. 
When the factories surrounding these communities break up natural gas and crude oil into usable compounds for plastic, rubber, or fertilizer, they also release tons and tons of highly toxic carcinogenic compounds into the air. As a result, the EPA told one town in Cancer Alley, St. John's Parish, that they face the highest risk of cancer in the country. But even if they somehow escape the grips of cancer, residents like Marilyn Francois can barely breathe taking out the trash. By the time I left from the trash can back in the house, I was breathing hard. And I knew it was something that was in that air. But the creation of plastics is not just a local problem. It's a global one, too. A comprehensive report on plastic creation worldwide reveals that if industry continues with a business-as-usual approach, by 2050, plastics will create 56 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions, which is 10 to 13 percent of the entire remaining carbon budget. The report goes on to say that the plastic and petrochemical industry's current plans to expand plastic production threaten to exacerbate plastics' climate impacts and could make limited global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius impossible. All told, Carbon Tracker estimates that for every metric ton of plastic created, $1,000 in externalities like health and environmental destruction are also created. Essentially, even before plastics reach our shelves and get thrown into our seas, its impacts are massive, and fossil fuel companies are to blame. Right about now, you might be thinking, well, I guess that means I should recycle more, right? Here's the thing. That's exactly what the fossil fuel industry wants you to do. In fact, for well over 40 years, the plastic and fossil fuel industries have poured millions of dollars into marketing campaigns, shifting the blame away from industry and onto the consumer. People start pollution. People can stop it. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Remember, a lot of the plastic packaging that you have in your kitchen is recyclable. The reality is that only 9% of plastic actually gets recycled. That's because the majority of the plastic we use, while theoretically recyclable in the lab, is just too costly to recycle in practice. That's right, the majority of plastics we're throwing in our recycling bins end up in the landfill. And if you think this isn't the fault of the plastics industry, you might be surprised to find that those little triangles on the back of your container are not a sign of their recyclability. They are instead a system that helps you identify what kind of plastic the container is made out of. In fact, the plastics industry used this triangle logo to trick customers into thinking their plastic was recyclable. That code was a numbering system put inside the well-known symbol for recycling. The problem, recyclers said, is that it left the impression that all those kinds of plastics were actually being recycled. As a result, recycling plants are inundated with non-recyclable plastics, while consumers continue to buy and recycle thinking they've avoided plastics impact. In short, by placing the emphasis on recycling, which happens after the plastic has been made and the profits pocketed, the fossil fuel and plastic industries could get people to buy more by assuaging consumer guilt about pollution. Or, as the head of the Society of the Plastics Industry puts it, If the public thinks the recycling is working, then they're not going to be as concerned about the environment. There is some hope, though. Carbon Tracker predicts that the demand for plastic won't match up to what fossil fuel companies predict, and reveals that the plastics industry is ripe for regulation that can squeeze fossil fuel industries even more. But the key thing here is that that won't happen unless we mobilize. And no, I'm not talking about straw bans. I made a whole video about why they're ineffective and ableist. What needs to happen is a re-envisioning of how our packaging and production systems work. As individuals, especially in countries like the United States, especially for the elite who generate disproportionate amounts of waste and emissions, it is important to think hard about our relationship to consumption. But of course, reducing consumption, plastic or otherwise, is a difficult prospect in a world that has plastic-wrapped everything. Nowadays, you can't even buy lettuce without buying plastic. 
which means that the path towards decentering plastic has to focus on changes along systemic lines. Corporations need to cease these destructive practices, and people and governments have the power to force them to do that. On the policy level, this means not subsidizing new plastic plants and requiring companies to pay for or internalize the environmental and social costs of plastics, including the costs that have already been incurred by people in areas like Cancer Valley. But until the fossil fuel industry is forced to reckon with the immense harm it's caused, it will continue to hold on to plastic for dear life. Now, you may still be thinking, well, if not plastic, then what else? What sort of plastic alternatives are available right now? So I've uploaded an extended version of this video that dives a bit into plastic alternatives on the streaming platform my creator friends and I built called Nebula. The bonus content replaces this ad because there aren't any ads on Nebula. And you'll not only see a lot of bonus content and ad-free videos over on Nebula from me, but also from channels like Second Thought and Polymatter. Nebula allows viewers to support creators directly so they don't have to worry about the pesky YouTube algorithm. Nebula is awesome but it's now made even better with our partnership with CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the go-to streaming platform for thousands of top-tier documentaries like Bag It, a documentary all about plastic bag waste and the global plastic crisis. And because CuriosityStream loves supporting educational creators, we worked out a deal where if you sign up with the link below, not only do you get access to CuriosityStream, but you'll also get Nebula for free. And this isn't a trial. You'll have Nebula as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. Also, because it's Earth Month, CuriosityStream is offering a special deal. 41% off their annual plan. That's less than a dollar a month for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula. By signing up, you not only directly support our changing climate, but you gain access to thousands of documentaries and exclusive videos from your favorite creators. So if you want to support both our changing climate and hundreds of other educational content creators, go to curiositystream.com slash OCC or click the link in the description and sign up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula for just $11.79 per year. That's 41% off. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. If you've already signed up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula, you can also support me by becoming an Our Changing Climate patron on Patreon. Just pledging a dollar a month gives me the financial stability I need to keep making videos like this. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks.